I'm afraid to say that the god of salt, Havria, was not the powerful god you imagine her to be. Rather, she was a small and weak god who yielded to all other gods. When it came to war, she lost, never able to win a seat among the Seven. Uh, what? During the Archon War, the gods of this world used all their strength and cunning to vie for control of Tevat. But Havria instead chose to flee. She thought that by giving up before a fight could start, she could save herself and her people from the war. However, during such a long war, there is no end to the advances of aggressors. After making countless concessions, Avria lost all of her lands, until only one small haven remained. No. No. It can't be so. In her last days, she had not even a single blade to defend her people with. Not even a single blade? Then... this sword... This sword is not a relic belonging to the God of Salt, but is instead the murder weapon used to kill her. Murder weapon? No! That's not true! That can't be true! You're trying to test my faith in the God of Salt. As I said before, I only state the facts. Preposterous! You, you are a follower of Morax. Don't try to trick me! Hey! Hey! Come back! Indeed. Otherwise, why would I use the truth as punishment? I did not want to tell her such cruel facts. But the contract was broken. Let's follow her deeper into the ruin. There, I fear, we will find something that will leave her no choice but to face the truth. This is the scene of the crime. Havria's body dissipated, leaving nothing but these traces of salt. Her dying moments have since been frozen in time to this very day. <sighs> the story continues that some among her people realized at last that this gentle, kind, but weak god could never protect anyone in wartime. The Archon War was cruel in the extreme. Instead of consigning her to the agony of defeat, they thought perhaps it would be better to give her a quick release. But what about these statue thingies? No matter how weak the god, the power that flows forth when they are slain is beyond the strength of mortal coils to bear. Those who could not flee were thus transformed. Those of her people who were untouched by this disaster left for Lyua, where they sought refuge with Rex Lapis. Their descendants feared Havria's remnants and lived in terror that she had laid upon them an eternal curse. So they risked their lives to come here, to break the sword and offer up obeisances in hopes that her anger might be appeased. But they need not have done so. For how could a god who had never once resisted, even till the end, nurse hatred for her people in her heart? Uh, I... Even if this is so, I can't! This must be a lie. A false history, all of it! Don't you dare try to shake my faith! Yikes. 
Xiang Li didn't show any mercy this time either. This is the price she must pay. Yet I would not call it a bad thing. Judging by how she appeared, I fear that she will struggle for a time. But even if she may not escape that struggle immediately, simply recognizing the truth is good enough for now. Indeed. In ages past, Havria's story served as a warning to me as well. Faith in a god who has already passed will do you no good. So it is for Havria. And so it is for Morax also. All right then. Now, would you like to accompany me in taking a trip to Guyan Stone Forest? Huh? What do you want to do, Zhongli? <sighs> Treading old ground. Telling old stories. <laughs>